Well, hi guys, welcome back to the Brazilian Expat. Uh, just having my morning coffee here. It's around seven o'clock now in the morning. Just uh, woke up an hour ago and uh, it's already 28 degrees here in the shade. It's, uh, well, it's not so bad, you know, there's a nice breeze coming through and this is usually my morning routine, you know, every day around seven, eight o'clock. I read the morning news uh, before starting to work, you know, on the, um, here in my bed and breakfast, you know. Uh, I try to get up before the guests uh, wake up, you know, and uh, make sure breakfast and everything is ready and served. Um, and I guess this lifestyle, you know, appeals to a lot of you. And uh, I know there are a lot of you who, um, who actually wish to retire in Brazil and for good reason as Brazil is currently one of the easiest country to to retire to uh, of course there are a few criteria that needs to be met you know but uh, this is uh, I think 99% uh, of you all uh, will meet this criteria no problem at all you know it has a little to do with uh, your financial situation and of course uh, criminal backgrounds and uh, some stuff like that but uh, it's nothing uh, it's nothing out of the ordinary and uh, Brazil is a super easy easy country to retire to so I'm gonna be walking with you uh, step by step um, uh, what uh, the criteria are and um, how you should go about um, getting ready to retire to Brazil if that's your plan so let's go Okay, so currently, what are the requirements for retiring in Brazil? So the first thing you're probably going to do is you need to find a Brazilian consulate, you know, in your country. And uh, that will probably be your first stop to get the required documents or the applications to fill out. It's basically an application or a letter that you need to fill out for your reason to move to Brazil. You know, it's going to be stated that, okay, you want to retire in Brazil and um, you want to live there, you know, for the, <laughs> for the re remaining of your living years or something like that, you know. I haven't seen the form, but I, I can uh, expect it's something written like that. Um, you need to declare your income for the last, I don't know, uh, two or three years or something like that. Uh, you need to actually prove that you are retired and that you are receiving, you know, a monthly income from, from the government. Um, and this is usually done just from, from bank statements or so, you know, uh, I would get some uh, official documents just proving that that you're actually uh, retired and I would also guess that all of these need to be translated uh, also into Portuguese you know uh, and you need to have a um, it needs to be done with the uh, license uh, tr translator so you just can't translate it yourself it needs to be from a licensed translator and it needs to be stamped I guess um, but uh, I think your consulate, uh, consulate, the uh, Brazilian consulate should should help you with all of this. Yeah, they should have their contacts here. Uh, so it is kind of a process. You need you need to get all your documents, and you also need to get them translated into Portuguese. Um, so basically, how much do you actually need to make? Um, I read a couple of different, you know. Um, different criteria. Uh, currently what I'm seeing on the official uh, website of the Brazilian government is that you actually need 
um, a salary equivalent of around 6,000 Brazilian reais per month. Um, and that is quite a lot uh, in, you know, Brazilian uh, Brazilian standards, you know, with if you take the average salary here in this country, it's quite a lot actually. Six thousand reais a month is um, is quite a good salary. However, um, this corresponds, I think, with today's uh, exchange rate. I will uh, look it up here. I was uh, ill prepared. I'm sorry about this. And today is roughly one thousand. 133 US dollars and because as of today we're in the uh, pandemic the COVID-19 crisis and the Brazilian real has just you know it's just lost all of its value you know it's just uh, plummeted it's it's uh, the value has basically been cut in half, you know, the last couple of years against the US dollar uh, because of, not only because of the pandemic, but it has also to do with the uh, economic uh, situation in Brazil prior to that, you know. We had a change of president, we had an impeachment of President Dilma, and um, it's just been a little bit political chaos at the moment, which also has contributed to the um, decline of the uh, Brazilian currency, the Brazilian real. Um, so, on the official, you know, site, it was it's actually written six thousand reais a month. That needs to be your minimum monthly income. However, I read, uh, I don't know if this is specifically to the U.S. Um, citizens retiring. I read uh, also elsewhere. Um, that the minimum is 2,000 US dollars uh, per month. So I'm not sure if they recently changed that or you know which one it actually is. Uh, this is also something you, um, your uh, Brazilian consulate will definitely know and, and will will answer will know the, que uh, the answer to to this question. Now just keep in mind that, um, you know, all these criteria, it changes like from year to year, uh, they will change the criteria a little bit, you know. Um, for me, when I came here uh, the first time in Brazil 15 years ago, um, I came in with an investor visa. And uh, the criteria at that time for me was to invest a minimum of 50,000 US dollars, you know, that was the minimum criteria. Um, to invest into the country to actually be el eligible for for a permanent residence and um, actually it's not permanent because you need to renew it I think it's every five years you know you need, actually need to prove that your business is still alive and you're still making money and you're still investing investing and you have uh, you know you have employed you know a minimum of X amount of Brazilian, you know, local employers, um, and uh, all of these criteria is subject to change, you know, every every single year. And uh, at the current at the current time, I believe um, it is no longer fifty US dollars, uh, fifty thousand US dollars. I think it's uh, at the moment it's a hundred thousand Brazilian reais. But I haven't checked. This could actually have been changed again now, especially since with the pandemic, you know, I, I would expect because the currency is so weak at the moment that they may have changed that criteria again. Okay, I'm going a little bit off track here. I'm just saying that, you know, as I'm making this video, you know, if this is your plan to retire um, tomorrow, or if this is your, you know, you're just watching this video and thinking, oh, I'm gonna retire in five years, you know, just remember, in five years, all this criteria could have changed, you know, the rules could be totally different. So just take all of this, you know, as a guide, but you still need to check with your consulate, you still need to check, you know, what is actually the requirement as of today, as of the day you are actually planning to, to relocate to Brazil. <laughs> That's my point, you know, so uh, moving forward, um, other requirements are, like I said, you need to prove, uh, of course, your income. I'm 
sorry about the noise here. We're actually doing some construction here at the, at the bed and breakfast. Um, so there's a little bit of noise, I do apologize. Well, okay, it's currently quiet. I just need to move the camera a little bit. I was uh, worried about the winds picking up here and don't want, uh, you know, any noise pollution on this video. So moving forward, um, I just opened up the uh, official site, the governmental site on the, um, on the internet here and um, I'm just looking up the current uh, requirements for, that you need for, for retiring in, in Brazil. And I'm gonna quote here, uh, the first one is a letter informing the reason of moving to Brazil and <clears throat> of course this is what I mentioned earlier is basically the application that you will receive on your first visit to the consulate in um, to the Brazilian consulate in your country and basically you just fill out this form here <clears throat> and just uh, it's about your personal information and the you know the, the reason why you're why you want to move to Brazil which is obviously that you want to retire uh, and this um, this form or this um, application, you just uh, sign that, and I guess it's just returned to the uh, Brazilian consulate. Um, the second point is declaration um, from an institution detailing monthly retirement income, and I guess this would just be like a bank statement uh, issued by your bank, you know, just proving that you do meet the. Uh, the minimum requirement and I'm just reading now on the uh, official site here that um, the current requirements are actually like 6,000 Brazilian reais per month and I'm quite surprised by that uh, because of the um, the current um, you know the evaluation of the currency here because of the uh, because of the uh, current situation, you know, the Brazilian real has has fallen significantly, and um, you know, six thousand Brazilian reais is is just over one thousand one hundred and thirty-three U.S. dollars. So that's significantly less than two thousand U.S. dollars that it was previously. However, I'm not surprised if this is going to change very soon. So you know, just keep an eye out for that. You know, if um, when you actually. Um, when you actually do decide to to make the move and retire to Brazil you should uh, obviously check this uh, requirement because this is most likely to change I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised at all if they uh, if they change that very soon also there is a declaration from your bank um, that uh, the applicant can actually transfer funds to Brazil now this is kind of <laughs> I don't know how to interpret uh, this one here, but my guess would be if there is any jurisdictional uh, issues, you know, in your like uh, jurisdictional, I'm talking about if there is, um, you know, if you, in your country you have some outstanding payments or the government, you know, is um, requ requesting some, some funds or they will restrict you from uh, sending money overseas. Um, for whatever reason, you know, then of course um, you, you would have an issue uh, because um, w I, I, the way I'm interpreting this um, this requirement here is that you are allowed to transfer money overseas, you know, um, without any issues, you know, from your um, from the government uh, wherever you are living, you know. Um, and that's that's the only way I can inter interpret that, you know. And of course, this shouldn't be a problem for most of you. But of course, where there are certain jurisdictional, uh, you know, maybe restrictions on on your bank account or on your, um, you know, your civil status or you know whatever, uh, then that can be an issue. But it shouldn't be. Yeah? And of course, this one is quite obvious. It's a proof of retirement issued by an official institution. And this is, of course, you need to prove that you're actually retired. <laughs> uh, that is, uh, yeah, that doesn't need any more explanation. 
And the last one here is all non-Brazilian documents must be notarized by the competent authorities in their country of origin and by the respective Brazilian consulate and then translated by a sworn Brazilian translator in Brazil. Um, now this, I also mentioned this, that all your documents, they need to be translated by an official translator uh, in Brazil, obviously. I, th I recently thought that, um, I previously thought that this could be done in, for example, the US or wherever you're living, uh, that your consulate there would have its own uh, official translator, translators. But the way it looks here, that it needs to be translated by a, an official or a, um, a sworn Brazilian translator in here in Brazil. Um, but like I said, all of this, um, I think the Brazilian consulate, they will give you all the information how to go about uh, of this. But like I said previously, all of your documents, everything that you bring, it actually needs to be translated, needs to be stamped, it needs to be translated by, by an official translator. Apart from that, the documents that you actually need uh, to bring along are, um, and this is also, I'm going to be quoting here from the site, it's an original police clearance certificate, and this basically is just saying that you have, you know, no criminal history. Um, no outstanding warrants whatsoever. Uh, an original uh, photocopy of your passport. It says here your curriculum vitae, you know, your CV. Uh, I'm not sure about this one. This is kind of strange, but if you're retired, you're retired, you know. If you, it shouldn't really matter, uh, you know, what your qualifications are. Uh, I find this kind of strange, but it actually is, is noted here uh, curriculum that you need to bring a, a copy of your curriculum vitae, but okay. Um, original or certified copy of marriage certificate, if applicable, okay. So if you're married um, and you bring your spouse along, then of course you need to, um, you need to have an official uh, marriage um, declaration or certificate. Uh, evidence of residential address. Um, evidence of residential address. I guess this. Uh, well, this must correspond to your address in the U.S. I guess so. You need a proof of that that you actually have a house and you have a permanent address in the U.S. or wherever you're coming from. Um, bank statement. Obviously, this is to prove of your your, um, your monthly income. Uh, so, bank statement. I. It just says bank statement, but my guess would be, you know, bank statement from at least the previous year or the previous two years or whatever. Like I said, this is your consulate will probably confirm this. Uh, two passport size photos. Um, and this is, of course, I guess for your, um, when you do um, get your permanent uh, residence approved here in Brazil, you will get like, it's like a plastic card around this big, um, all foreigners, uh, foreign um, permanent residents will get this card eventually and it has like a photo of you and this is like your, this ID card is valid everywhere in Brazil. It's, um, this is probably one of the most important documents and you need to show this also along with your passport every time you leave and come back into the, to the country, into Brazil. Uh, it's a shame I didn't bring it, I could show it to you. <clears throat> so I guess that is what this photo is for um, and original or certified copy of your birth certificate uh, a medical certificate I guess um, it just shows it just states a medical certificate I'm not sure what the reason is um, but I guess is is uh, if you come here and um, because when you come here when when you they eventually grant your um, retirement here in Brazil, um, you will be eligible for all of the um, social benefits here you will receive here in Brazil. And uh, of course, the public health system also is, uh, is uh, free for you to use. 
So I would be guessing like if you do have a terminal illness or something like that, then you will pro probably not be eligible for entry into Brazil. That would be my guess, you know, so um, I guess you need to be healthy and without any serious health is issues to be eligible to come to Brazil. Um, that's my only guess. Um, yeah, and it says here again, proof of pension, you know, that is part of the criteria, of course. So basically, that's it. Um, and the whole process, like I said, is, um, uh, is uh, I'm not sure about step by step the process, but your uh, consulate will, of course, uh, guide you through this, um, guide you through this step here. Another thing that I forgot to mention also, um, Brazil does recognize dual citizenship, so you don't need to give up your, you know, your American passport or your European passport when you um, get um, your visa approved here in Brazil, your permanent residency. So you are of course allowed to leave the country at any time just keep in mind that if you do leave brazil uh, you need to be back into the country within two years if you do stay out for two years um, then uh, your visa will automatically be, be uh, revoked you know so keep that in mind also but um, but like i said also is um, you are, uh, of course, allowed to leave at any time. And a lot of retirees, they do that. They maybe go back to their country like once a year and they, you can do all your uh, medical checkups, uh, your dentist or whatever you need in, uh, in the US or in Europe or wherever, you know? And, um, and then just come back again. So that's no problem at all. Just keep in mind the two years uh, you need to be back in Brazil or you will lose your, uh, your residency here. Also, when you do uh, when you do move and when you get everything approved and you actually move, you're actually allowed to bring all of your belongings uh, in the U.S. You can ship those over in a in a container, and uh, you don't have to pay any tax of it um, as long as uh, it's all yours. And this is what you had before coming into to Brazil. You can bring it all over, no tax involved. You just have to pay the shipment cost, obviously. Okay, so another thing to keep in mind is when you do um, eventually move to Brazil, where do you want to live? You know, do you want to live smack in the middle of the big cities here? You know, it's um, there are advantages and disadvantages for for living in the in this in the cities, and of course, the advantages are that you will always be close to any public service like um, the hospital or uh, you know a pharmacy or the big supermarkets. You know, if you do grocery shopping. Uh, it, there will always, always be, you know, everything will be available uh, within a short distance. Um, so that won't be a problem. Um, so the downside of living in a city, obviously, is it's a big city, you know, and um, the Brazilian cities, they're quite chaotic, you know, there's a lot of traffic, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of pollution. Um, you know, there's a lot going on uh, every single day, you know, and um, and you know it can be okay you know you can have a like apartment in a condo you know um, yeah, and uh, you can kind of isolate yourself from from the outside world but I think also you should consider also actually moving outside the cities you know uh, the big cities because like you come uh, when you come outside the cities you know in the all of these small towns uh, usually you have like that better community feeling you know it's uh, it's a lot more quiet you have a lot more um a lot less traffic a lot less chaotic a lot less stress um and um you can have like a beautiful house on the beach uh, on the beachfront and I think that is what appeals to most uh, people actually moving here. Now, being outside the cities, often um, the uh, public services will be more limited, yeah? Because um, you usually have something they call UPA, Unidade Pronto de Atendimento, which basically translates into, it's just like a, um, a point of um, an emergency center. Um, 
and usually they have this spread out all over and all of the bigger towns uh, will, will have at least one UPA and um, but this this one here they don't have the facilities to like if you do injure yourself or it's something serious you know you will come there they will take you in but you still have to wait for an ambulance to arrive from one of the bigger cities or one of the bigger hospitals to take you there you know so it's not like a lot of the serious incidents they will not be able to help you there and then you know so just keep that in mind uh, but you know most of the time like i said if you do move outside the cities maybe just an hour or two hours at most uh, transit into the big cities um, you should be okay you know but i wouldn't uh, as a retiree i wouldn't try and be too adventurous you know and moving somewhere really really remote because that can uh, you know you can have a lot of issues uh, if something should happen you know so try and um, do your research you know where you want to go and try and find a place that you have everything within at least a reasonable uh, you know within reasonable reach you know if something should happen my best uh, tip for you um, moving to Brazil is actually to be moving somewhere where you actually have a network of other foreigners you know especially if you're an American you know I would uh, I would try to seek out at least somewhere near an American consulate and maybe also um, try to reside somewhere where there is a community of other Americans or at least other English-speaking uh, you know foreigners <clears throat> just because of when you come here if you don't know the language straight away uh, if you haven't learned you know at least some basic Portuguese you know it's vital that you have somebody to talk to somebody to help you out at least in the first couple of years you know even for me who came here as an investor you know it was extremely important for me at least to get a hold of other uh, foreigners who have been living here for some years who know the ropes who know you know how to go about um, you know settling in here <clears throat> and i think that's extremely important because if you come here you know all alone don't know anybody uh, don't know the language of course it's it's gonna be a real real struggle so i would you know try and you know find some forums or something like that you know on facebook i know there's a lot of facebook groups you know americans living in brazil and uh you know getting get in contact with your fellow uh, retirees you know in um, here in brazil uh, have a talk with them you know have um, get some tips you know and uh, and if you can you know the best thing would be to actually move somewhere close to where you have at least at least one contact you know that that you can if you do have any issues you know that you can go uh, for any sort of help or any sort of assistance uh, because there will arise some issues eventually you know that you will need some help with uh, translations or whatever you know it's 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 a jungle when you get here just with the bureaucracy uh, everything going on getting all of your documents in order opening your your bank account you know and um, just finding out uh, where where everything is you know just getting familiar with the brazilian culture getting familiar with the area and just how everything works you know so it's always good to have somebody somebody who's you know at least speaks, speaks your language and can help you out so that is um that 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 would be a great tip i think well okay so i think i actually covered everything in that video um, if there's something that i left out or uh, you have any questions about anything or any doubts you know leave a comment here below i will try and do my research and i'll try and answer you as uh, at the best of my abilities at least i hope you enjoyed this uh, video and that it was somewhat informative uh, let me know if there's uh, anything that any topics you would like me to discuss uh, with you and uh, I will keep that in mind on my uh, upcoming videos, yeah? I will try and uh, help you guys out as best as I can. 
until then, stay safe, uh, have fun, and uh, I hope to see you here soon in this wonderful, wonderful country here in Brazil. All right, be safe, guys. Take care, and uh, until next time on the Brazilian Expat. Ciao.